Right, hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and welcome to another match reaction where Liverpool just survived against Tottenham 2-1. Uh, expressions, really good friends of mine, much love to you my brother, but don't ever, 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 you 6 foot 2 Chris Rock from Tesco, don't you dare ever talk to me about football ever again. Coming onto the last stream looking like a Jamaican Grinch, talking to me like I was just some little man like Liverpool and not, and I mean get, don't get me wrong, we are in terrible, terrible form and this game amplifies it. But even through our worst form, my friends, we're still winning Champions League games. We're not just surviving through group stages. And we are most certainly and definitely the superior of the two teams, regardless of the situation that we're in and you're in. You're playing your maybe not best football, but in terms of results, these are the best results that you've been getting. And that's why this is hilarious to me that in your most efficient period... You're still getting absolutely annihilated. And a term that I like to use quite often, fingered by us when we're in our worst form. Now, was we up against the cost the whole entire game? Yes, but we came up against the team who's got less history than an unborn baby. So I'm more than okay. And we got the results, which is the most important thing. Granted to Spurs, granted to Conte, they've done what they needed to do. But disappointing from them as well. You'd concede the two goals, therefore you deserve to lose the game. we done enough to score two goals in the opening 10 minutes and they didn't do enough to get two goals for the remainder of the game. Now, people can mention VAR all they want. There's games where it goes for us. There's games where it goes against us. There's an agenda that we seem to be live our pool when I see decisions on a week-to-week -week basis for the rest of the big six. But they don't talk about it, though, no. Not, not, not about our baby. When it's you, it concerns you. VAR benefits and goes against everybody, so the fact that it did go against us for the Thiago file, the Trent Alexander-Arnold one I think was up for debate, but I definitely don't think it would have been a bad thing to give it a penalty. It doesn't matter. Hold that, you white-wearing piece of shit, mate. Oh, bl what, what's, the, what's the tune? Um, oh, when the Spurs go marching in. Oh, when the Spurs go marching in. You f absolute fools, mate. I haven't, won a I haven't won a trophy since 2008. And that was our League Cup. We won the League Cup in the FA Cup last season. And we got slandered. And you're talk up coming on to my show, Emerson Royale, better than Trent. Trent was shaky today. But what did Emerson Royale do? And that was the point I was trying to emphasise on the show with expressions and this game was not personal for me Spurs have always been that club that I've just tolerated I've accepted but I got rattled on the last show and when I get rattled on a show I come back with ferociousness I come back with energy and best believe when I get expressions on the channel the energy will be kept the same because I got a win and I'm in a position right now where my team is not playing good enough football to a point where I can sit here with chest and say we're going to compete for leagues. My wins are my mini wins. I've gone from, my team has gone from competing for trophies to now maybe, maybe in buzzing about Spurs. Why am I buzzing about that? It's because in recent games, we never got that type of result, even though we played terrible. Nottingham, we were under the cosh. Leeds, we were under the cosh. Those games, we didn't get the result, but we've done it against Spurs, and they've clearly got more quality than the other two. But yes, we were shite. Yes, we were shocking. Don't let it get to you, though, Liverpool fans, because that was a win. That was a that was a huge win as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it moves us up to eighth place in the table. We're moving up in the world, and... It's a step in the right direction results-wise because it's one game closer to the World Cup. The World Cup's kind of being looked at as that reset period where we can improve and whatever have you. Um, let's hope that's the case because we can't be seeing more performances like that. And the reason why I'm happy and people will be like, oh, James, you've been sad all season. Why are you happy now? I just want to take the piss out of Tottenham fans because they thoroughly deserve it. Um, however... I'm, I'm obviously not sitting here saying we're going to go and win league titles or compete for trophies again. I think we'll probably end up drawing or something to Southampton. However, we've done what we needed to do. And if there's anything I've said wrong in this video and you've mistaken the the the, the banter with Spurs fans as, oh, we're back, not a chance. Nowhere near. I am terrified for the rest of the season. And I actually don't even think the World Cup's going to be that much of a reset. I think we're going to be seeing performances like this for the rest of the season because realistically, banter aside, we should have lost that game. Like, it's not no if ands, buts. Um, possibilities, maybes, and and every every other word that correlates to those same ones or abbreviates those same words. And uh, here's Salah on the screen now. What a performance from him! And it just shows a player like him is important to have in the squad. And regardless what people want to say about his overall performances, he's a match winner. He gets your goals. He's efficient. And if everyone else is doing their job, then Mohamed Salah is a very, very important player to have in the team. The same way Haaland is very important to Man City. The same way. 
Lewandowski is important to Barcelona and was important to Bayern Munich. It's that player who can just get you an extra couple of goals. And he doesn't have the greatest all-round game. He's not going to be dribbling past PR players. but And not to mention, both goals kind of came off a mistake from Spurs, especially the second one. Still got on the ends of them, still took those chances away and still won us this game of football as far as I'm concerned. So a leap from Salah doing what he needs to do. I thought Nunes had to go open in 10 minutes. Um, same with the rest of the team. I thought we were popping it round. Trent with some absolutely exquisite passes. But then, probably from around, I'd say a 25 to 30 minute spell from Spurs in the first half, they were better than us. First 10 minutes, we were all over them and that was enough to win the game. Second half, it was non-existent from Liverpool. It was so poor. And I'm past the point of being angry now because I expect these performances. I didn't expect the result. Therefore, I'm happy that we got the result. And people will say, oh, but you're dropping standards. I'm sorry I dropped standards, but these players have dropped standards and I'm going to adjust with what they're showing me on a week-to-week -week basis. And If Virgil van Dijk can sit there and say, I'm playing as good as I have always played. If Salah's sitting there, even though he scored twice today, saying, I've played as good as I've always played... Same with the rest of them, by the way. I'm not just trying to single out players. You know, even Alisson had a really poor game today. So shaky. And Gary Neville made a good point. I never done a watch-along, by the way, because I was, I'm was i not feeling well today. And the watch-along would have took it out of me because Liverpool stressed me out. And the doctor said try and be under as little stress as possible. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm not, I never really had to go to the doctors. I'm just under the weather. Either way, Gary Neville made a good point saying, like, we're, we're telling each other to calm down. And that's probably not a good thing because we're taking way more touches on the ball and the next player that you pass it to, they try and slow it down and take an extra touch and then you lose it. And we just never matched the intensity with Tottenham. And this is why when people make a point about the age of this squad or maybe not even the age, just more so like if some of these players' legs are going, that is being evident like in majority of the games this season. We've been outrunning the majority of the games this season. So it's not just that we're playing worse. It's not that the technical ability has gotten worse. We just can't match teams for intensity. So that either speaks to me, we need to start replacing some of these players because they haven't got the legs for it no more. No matter how good you are as an actual technical footballer, we have been built on being an energetic team and outrunning teams. And that's what made us win all those games years ago where we became one of the most consistent teams of all time and that the Premier League's ever seen. Statistically, that's not just me hyping up my team. That's statistically proven. Um, we were brilliant and it was due to that high intensity we need to get that back and these players don't look like they're going to be able to do it but these players can get moments of brilliance now what does that remind you of because there's a team called Man United who literally just went through a period exactly like that where they relied on moments of brilliance where the players couldn't keep up with the intensity of the game like Paul Pogba but Paul Pogba can find a beautiful pass or he can find or create a beautiful shot and get a goal and Again, moments of brilliance, but never done it for the whole game. These players are doing the same thing. Besides, I'm trying to think of one solid performer throughout the game today, and I'm struggling to think of one. I thought it was going to be... After, after the first 15 minutes, I was like, Nunes is, is brilliant. Like, he's playing boss, and then he just ghosted the rest of the game. I thought Trent, same thing. Like, this is proper classic Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's not overdoing things. He's, he's enjoying the game. He's doing what he needs to do, and... Yeah, it was just a, it was a mad, mad game of, of events today. And I'm watching the highlights as we speak. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. But people, that's going to be my match reaction. Expressions hold that, you fucking fool. And I will see you on the show uh, whenever that may be. And I, again, so rattled at Spurs fans because of expressions. Remember that, Spurs fans. The whole heap of shite that I gave it at the start of the video is because of that man. Because he's a pussy old, a pussy old, a Pussy old brav, and he deserved all those words. Anyway, um, thank you for watching this match reaction. Last thing, because I was supposed to do it on a video yesterday, forgot, so I had to promote it in this video. 888 Sport have released a recent video, so if you want to check that out after this, go and check it out, and here is a clip. But guys, I will see you in a bit. Peace. Every Manchester United fan will tell you how what a breath of fresh air he's been, mm. but I'm not going to let that overshadow the fact that Jesus, above him, has his team's top, and it's amazing, and Haaland is just... May I may I make a case for Gabriel Jesus top just just in yes, case you want certainly, I'll make the case and then you can dismiss it if you wish. In terms Dismissed. of in terms <laughs> of, um, <laughs> in terms of the impact on the teams, in terms of the current standing of the teams, I think that with or without the signing of uh, Haaland, Manchester City would be either at the top of the league or very near the top of the league and most likely to win the Premier League mm. with or without him. Without the signing of Gabriel Jesus, 
I honestly think Arsenal would be at best in the conversation for top four. So in terms of the change, in terms of the impact, in terms of the difference, I think Gabriel Jesus has had more of an impact on his team than maybe everybody else combined. I think he is he has completely changed the entire perception and entire expectation of a club the size of Arsenal. Where do you think Manchester City will finish the league with Haaland? Do you think they'll be champions? Yeah. Where, just hypothetically, where do you think they would have finished the league without Haaland? Without Haaland, Jesus and Sterling? Mm. No, the presumably they would have kept work. a striker. Presumably they would have kept uh, Jesus. You think they'd win the league, presumably? Mm. 